In section 3, we're going to take a look at descriptive analysis to understand the data using type equals 2 level basic. First, on slide 17, let's remind ourselves about the data structure. Data are going to be in uh, long format, so we have time nested in individuals. And here we show the three key columns in the data, ID hours and the positive affect score. So for person one, we observe him or her um, one, two, three, four times at hours 9, 10, 11, 13. And then person two observed at times 9 and 11, followed by person three, etc. I'm going to propose that we do uh, five steps in our analysis to understand the data better. Step one, which we're talking about here, it's going to be a two level basic analysis to check histograms for the variables and with the in between level variation in between level plots. I'm going to use maximum likelihood with robust standard errors in chi square for that. Step, step equals two is going to be then a two level uh, analysis, a modeling uh, activity, two level or two level random. And we're going to model the variation in the mean in the variance and in the correlations, that's the new feature, using then the base estimator. And I'm going to refer to that as regular two-level analysis, as opposed to what we do in step number three, which is a two-level, perhaps a two-level random DSEM analysis, where we bring time into the picture. That's also going to be by using the base estimator. I'm going to start with a univariate analysis, which I think is useful to understand how the data behaves before we go into complex models, as in step four, where we do uh, the same type of analysis, but for the bivariate case. So bringing in more variables, then go on multivariate, if that's what's called for. And finally, then in step five, turning to type equals cross-classified analysis. So cross-classified DSIM instead of two-level DSIM still using the base estimator. On slide 18 then, here's step one, the two-level basic analysis. We're going to take a look at positive affect, negative affect, and also the tired, var tired variable, as well as the hours variable. And this is sort of a basic uh, first analysis, which helps you helps make sure that you're reading the data correctly, which is a fundamental error that is made quite often in our experience. So we have um, two-level analysis, two-level basic analysis. We has, have to give a cluster variable, that cluster equals ID, and we're going to do a lot of plotting, so we use type equals plot3. In the output, then, we get a warning that one or more individual level variables have no variation within a cluster. And then it lists the clusters. So those individuals uh, have uh, limited value for the analysis. And we're going to be particularly uh, interested in deleting them when we get to DSEM modeling. So these individuals may be deleted, and we're going to talk about that more in detail later. For now, we're going to keep them in the analysis. Here's a summary of the data that's printed in the output. We have 240 individuals. And so we have the uh, cluster IDs and ordered by size of the clusters. That is, in this case, how many time points they have. It's 1 through 24, continuing 25 to 49. And the average seems to be around 24 time points. And we recognize then uh, the, if you go back one slide here, uh, the first positive affect cluster that had no within cluster variation was 240. Go back to slide 819. 240 is bolded here. That person had only two time points for which they gave the same PA answer. That's a person that you don't get much value from in terms of the overall analysis. And uh, we also have slide at, at ID 249, which is, has three time points with equal values. And then ID 78, 
with 4 and ID 531 with 5. 531 was the last one of the four. So five, equ five time points with equal value, uh, those individuals could be safely deleted. Uh, individual 45 is bolded for another reason that we get to in the uh, uh, in subsequent analysis. So here is our first result on slide 20. <coughs> we get the so-called estimated interclass correlations out of the type equals basic analysis. So we have an interclass correlation for PA, for NA, and for tired. And the correlation is about 0.5. What is it? Well, it's really a variance ratio the variance between individuals over the total variance between plus within individuals. Now variation across or between individuals is viewed as a variation of a random mean. So you think about a variable that corresponds to a, an individual's or to the individual's mean across time. So each individual has a mean across time and that mean varies across individuals. So variation in the average level, so a trait variable or a response style variable. Different people have different average over time of their positive affect or negative affect. But they, uh, in addition then, we have variation across time for the individuals. And why is this important? Well, it has to do with um, how much variance in the outcome that this so-called trait variable uh, contributes. So it is the contribution of the variance between variance relative to the total variance. So it's the R square of the trait in, uh, in the regression of the observed variable on the trait. So it's a very key uh, quantity that we're interested in. And it's often quite high, uh, uh, but of, often around 0.5 at least. But there certainly is more variation uh, than that. The within, there's still within variation that's substantial. Slide 21, then we take a look at some histogram plots. And for the positive affect variable, we see that it's uh, quite skewed. We have a ceiling effect at the highest possible value, 22%. My rule of thumb is that um, you want to do something else than the linear regression or linear models when the ceiling effect exceeds, say, 25%. So uh, here it's not quite that bad, so uh, it wouldn't hurt us too much by treating it as a regular continuous approximately normal variable. Now for the negative affect, it looks much worse. We have 60% at the floor effect. So here you would not want to go ahead and just treat it as a continuous variable and e expect to get results that are uh, trustworthy because the regular models that we use are not designed for variables that have that strong of a floor effect. For the tired variable, we have 23% floor effect, and again, that's, to me, acceptable. Here's an interesting histogram from this run as well. For the hours variable, I think that's something that you want to look at. So you have a histogram here. For the hours, you see the um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 days, the hours of the 7 days of the week, Tuesday through Monday. And you see that uh, most measurements are in the middle of the days. Here uh, we have the hour of 23, 11 o'clock at night, and a uh, few measurements there. People are coming uh, alive again at 30 hours, namely at 6 o'clock, six hours after midnight, coming back. So you can see uh, the coverage of measurements across time here. And you see also a certain tendency to uh, drop out, or, or at least give fewer answers uh, as time goes on. <clears throat> you also see then that um, although the maximum time is 168, as we agreed on on previous slides, 
you have observations that are much higher than that, 170 and up to 243. So here are some glitches in the data that you want to check check out what happened there. People kept reporting or some score, scoring error. So you want to cut off, have a, in your series analysis that follows, you want to have a use observation restriction to only include those with max time 168, not beyond that. Now this histogram actually I got by changing the display properties from the default of 20 bins to 100 bins to see it more clearly. On slide 23 then, we show um, a between level histogram of the person's average over time. So here's the average over time. So you take each person's average and that becomes a new variable across people, so 240 observations, and then you do a histogram of that. So that's done in M+. Plus. And you see that that variable is m much less skewed than the uh, earlier histogram that we looked at for individual values. So now we only have 2% at the max value versus 22%. So that's because the, uh, the max value over here in B, it, it is the most common value observed in the data, but it does not mean that it's the most common average value. So two different things. This between level histogram of averages over time corresponds to uh, the distribution of random intercepts. So the random mean or random intercept, which is assumed to be normal in, a between, in the between level part of the model. It's not exactly normal, <coughs> Uh, but it's close enough to not cause serious distortions. On slide 24 then, which is the final part of uh, the first step, we take a look at the between level scatter plot, and these scatter plots are quite useful. Uh, here it is uh, of the mean over time on the x-axis for positive affect in this case, with a variance on the y-axis, variance for positive affect. And you see then that the variance is quite different, ranging from uh, almost zero up to uh, five here. Uh, so there is heteroscedasticity in the variance, difference in the variance, but we also see that there is some negative correlation here between the mean and the variance. So the smaller the average the mean over time, uh, the, uh, the larger the variation. So correlation is minus 0.43 in this case. So whatever modeling we do later on, uh, we should try to capture this relationship. For the negative effect, uh, it shows a correlation that's positive, 0 0.65, and the tired variable shows no correlation at all.